What's up friends, it's your boy Eric Bledsoe. Have you ever been disappointed with the results of your life? Like, I'm in my garden right now and we have had an incredible year of watermelon and yet our cucumbers and, and tomatoes in the back, they, they were a train wreck this year. And sometimes life can feel that way, like certain areas are, are going gangbusters and certain areas it just seems like we can't make it work, no matter how hard we try. I have learned the most beautiful lesson this year with watermelon that I thought might be helpful to you. In the myriad of things that can go wrong, watermelons have taught me the most important thing that I should be aware of when it comes to yielding the harvest I'm after. And I'm gonna share exactly what that is. My hope is that as we dig into the Word of God together to find out what watermelons are here to teach us, that together we'll be able to reap the harvest of righteousness and peace that we all long for. All that's coming up on this week's episode of the Take the Hill Show. Let's go. Is there anything more frustrating in life than disappointment? Right, especially when you don't know why. We plant gardens because we want a harvest, right? We plant specific vegetables or fruits because we want those fruits. But what do you do in life when you don't get the fruit you hoped for? What do you do when things don't go like you planned? Jesus talks a lot about fruits and a lot about gardens. Gardens are a really important thing to understand when it comes to the kingdom of God and ordering our lives in rhythms of grace that for produce the fruit of the Holy Spirit and the character of Christ. And it may seem silly, but watermelons have taught me a ton about something Jesus said. It turns out that watermelons are a vine. The most important thing in a watermelon's life is its connection to that vine and that vine's connection to the earth. And the simple lesson that that has taught me this summer is that in the myriad of things that could go wrong, whether pests or disease or drought or what have you, the first thing I need to check when the harvest isn't going as I'd hoped is my connection to Jesus. Jesus in John talks about, he says, I am the vine and you are the branches. If you remain in me, if you stay connected to me, you will bear much fruit. Am I truly connected to him? Is that connection strong? Am I making sure that I'm waking up before I have to? Am I making sure that I get alone with a copy of the Word of God? Am I praying? Am I asking the Holy Spirit to open up the text to me so that I could see Jesus? Am I ordering my life in rhythms of grace? Am I making sure that the truth and character and quality of Christ is flowing in and through and to me? And if that connection is not strong, then it doesn't matter what else I do. It doesn't matter what's in the soil. It doesn't matter what kind of bugs or pestilence come, right? If I'm not connected to Christ in deep and meaningful and rooted ways, nothing I do is going to produce that harvest in me. The most important thing, Jesus says, in all of our Christian faith, in all of life, is that we remain rooted and grounded in Him. The Apostle Peter says, if those characteristics remain in us then, and that character of Christ abounds in us and continues to grow in increasing proportion, it won't matter if it's spring, summer, winter, or fall. We will never be useless or unfruitful. We will always abound in every good work as we remain in Christ. And so friends, whatever your moment, whatever your current disappointment, I encourage you, check your connection to Christ? Are you abiding in Him? Are you casting your cares on Him? Are you seeking His wisdom and His counsel in every good work? Can you imagine what would be possible if we remained rooted and grounded in Christ? What would be possible in our marriages, in our families, in our careers, in our communities, in our homes, in our own hearts? Jesus says, in his kingdom, it's not a one-to-one -one harvest. He says it's a double portion. Sometimes it's 30, 60, or 100 fold. <laughs> like, I don't know about you, but that's what I want. Guys, our garden this year, they told me two and a half melons average per vine. We have three vines planted, and we're over 36 melons deep, and they're 50 pounds a piece. <laughs> like, <laughs> 
it's not just feeding us, but we have so much we don't know what to do with it. We're sharing it with our neighbors. And that's the kind of life that the Spirit of God can produce in the heart of a person who stays connected to Jesus. Friends, that's what I'm after, and I pray that that's the kind of increase you would see as you stay rooted and grounded in Christ. Let us run to Jesus, the author, perfecter, and finisher of our faith. I love you, friends. I'm for you, and he is with us. Let's take the hill and change the world. I'll see you next time. Bye.